If you are participating in Field Day, you should be doing this. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to talk to you about how to put your Field Day on the map and we're going to use APRS objects to do it. Now, before I get to showing you exactly how to do this, let's talk about APRS objects in general for just a minute. If you just want to learn how to put your Field Day site on the map, I'll leave some uh, timestamps right here on the screen so you can jump to that specific section. Now, an APRS object is just a piece of information that represents a point of interest, an event, or a static piece of information on the APRS network. Now, it's different from position reports because position reports are usually tracking something as it's moving. Objects are typically stationary. Not always, but typically you're going to find objects are stationary. And we can use objects to mark all kinds of things on the APRS network. For instance, at the air show that my club supported recently, we used objects to basically map out the entire grounds of the airport to give everybody reference as to where something was located. If you're going to be supporting a bike race, you might want to mark out things like water stations and maybe aid stations and possibly repair stations in addition to doing your normal tracking of your SAG vehicles. If your club is putting on a ham fest, you could also use objects to mark various things at the ham fest. So uh, where parking is located, maybe where bathrooms are located, uh, if they're not inside the main building. You could put where the main building is located. You could put where the entrance is located. You could even be announcing your talk-in frequency using an APRS object. If you work with your local group to support emergency communications, maybe during bad storms, you could always be listening to the repeater and mark things like car accidents or maybe trees blocking the road using an APRS object. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways we could use APRS objects to disperse information to a wide variety of people. Not only can you see this information with another APRS radio, but anyone with an internet connection can go to APRS.fi or APRS.to and be able to look at those objects that you've created. So now that you have an understanding of how you might use APRS objects, let's go ahead and jump over to the laptop and let me show you guys how to create an object in Yak. All right, so I've already got Yak open and configured. Here's my direwolf instance that Yak is talking to. If you don't know how to configure Yak, I have done some other videos on it in the past and how to get it configured. Check out my playlist for Yak. But let's go ahead right now and show you guys how easy it is to create an object. Now I'm zoomed in on the map here, roughly where I'm located, and there is a private airfield right here on the map. So if we wanted to mark that with an object, you simply put your cursor right on top of uh, the area you want to mark, and we're going to right click and come down to create an object. That will give you this dialog box here. The first thing we need to do is give the object a name, and let's see if airfield will fit. And it does look like it's going to fit. You are limited as to how many characters you get right here. We're going to find a symbol and for this one we'll just use the small aircraft. And then we need to choose right here how we want this object to be broadcast. There's three different choices here. We've got private, which means it only shows up on your instance of Yak and will not go out anywhere else. We've got local, which means it will only go out over RF. Or we've got global, which means it will go out over RF and get gated to the internet. When I create my field day objects, I definitely want that information going out globally so it's available both over RF and on the internet. So I'm going to choose global for this one. We want to tell it that it's a permanent item. Otherwise, it will only stay there for a short period of time and then it will decay and no longer appear either on RF or on the map. Now, let's go ahead and give it a comment here. So I'm just going to say private uh, airfield. And then I only want this to go out wide 1-1. One, one. If you want to reach out a little bit further, you could definitely leave this wide 1-1-2-1 one, one, one in as well. But for this test, I'm just going to use wide 1-1. One, one. And we'll go ahead and hit OK. 
Now, one thing uh, about Yak, if it doesn't show up immediately on the map, you might just need to move your map a little bit and it should show up. But there's the object that we just created. You can see that it says airfield and there's my comment of private airfield. Now, let's take a look at the way that looks on APRS.to. You can see my object right here that I just created and it just says airfield. But if we click into that, you will be able to see that comment that I left right there. So that's the comment that I created in Yak. And if I had a radio turned on like an HT type radio, this would also show up on the HT as soon as it was broadcast out. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, these objects will only stay active and keep broadcasting out as long as Yak is open. So if you close your instance of Yak, those objects are going to disappear. When you're ready, if you've left Yak open and you want to get rid of that, we can just right click on it and click delete the station. The other way you can get rid of it is you can come in to update the object and I'm going to choose the airfield right there and say OK. That will bring you back into this box here. We can just uncheck this object active and that will kill the object. Now the difference is, is this is actually going to send out a beacon uh, over RF that lets other stations, anyone that can hear it over RF, know that that object has been killed. So we'll just go ahead and send that out and then click OK. Now maybe you're already running a Digipeter and you're using Direwolf to run that Digipeter and control it. Let me show you guys what an object looks like inside of Direwolf. Now I stripped these few lines out of my Direwolf config file just so I could show you exactly what it looks like. The first line you see here that starts with the uh, pound sign is just a comment, so it just reminds me of what the object is. I've got multiple objects that I create inside of Direwolf, and putting that comment in there just makes it quick and easy to find it after the event and go ahead and comment this, this line out so that the object will no longer appear. So we're using the O-Beacon feature in Direwolf. The delay tells it to delay 60 seconds before sending the first beacon, and then it tells it right here, every equals 10, to send that beacon out every 10 minutes. Next, we're defining the symbol that's going to show up on APRS.fi and in the radios. And then we're giving it both the latitude and the longitude right here. The next thing we're going to define is the object name, and I've just got that set to SRARC field day via wide 1 1. Again, you could put uh, comma wide 2 1 out here as well. And then the comment. So this is what actually shows up on the map right here, and it actually goes down into that second line. But it just gives us some basic information about the field day site. So it gives our club abbreviation. It gives the date, it tells you that it's a field day site, and it gives you a website where you can go and get more information pertaining to our field day. And I've had more than one operator show up at our field day site because they saw it on APRS. And now you know how to put your club's field day on the map. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.